Love hey, it. Sean, before we let you go, and thank you for your time, we're going to ask all our guests this week that have played in grand finals, is there any grand final story for the lead-up, whether it's a grand final parade, something that, that happened that not many people might know about? Yeah, there's there's a, a strange one. Um, in 2004, I was in the grand final with Byron Pickett, and uh, we were sitting side by side, and um, and a bird did a did a poo on his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's good yeah. stuff, Sean. Um, and it wasn't an ordinary one. It was like a fluorescent green colour. It was like really. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert in, in bird poo, but it was fluorescent green, and it, it hit him in the shoulder. And it kind of we looked at each other, and I said to him, "That's good luck." And he goes, it is. And I, and I said, "You're gonna." I said, "We're gonna win tomorrow, and you're gonna win the Norm Smith." Oh, um, and he did. And, and he did. And he did. Wow, <laughs> he did. there you go. So that, that was the problem in 2009 and 10, Joe. Damn he didn't it, spend enough we, time outside. That's what we missed out on in 2009 <laughs> and 10. Just, just didn't get any bird trees. poop on Rui's shoulder. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, and it was flirting green. It was really weird. <laughs> that bird had eaten something it shouldn't have, it sounds like to me. <laughs> Hey, uh, just a couple of quick little stories. We like to get some sort of untold stories from grand final week. And injury is a big thing. Yep. A lot of players that we don't really know about at the time have to play through significant injury to try and get up. Because it is a grand final, you put it all in the line. Just a, a, a quick one example. 2009, uh, Robert Eddy, who was a great teammate of ours, he got yep. dropped for the grand final. Sean Dempster came back into the side. But on grand final morning, he was having breakfast with his mum and dad, thinking he was an emergency his mum and dad were down. They were going to the game. And at his breakfast, he got a call from Greg Hutchison, our football manager, saying, Rob, you're playing. You're Zach in. Dawson has woken up with food poisoning. Zach Dawson, it looks like he can't play. Mm. You're in. So, Rob, Eddie, all of a sudden, can you imagine grand final morning getting oh. told you're playing? Oh, when you think can't even. He was that excited. He told his parents. He got ready. He got to the ground. And they gave Zach Dawson every opportunity. He, I think he went and got on the drip for a little bit in the morning, uh, did a fitness test, and he passed. So he ended up playing, but he was really crook, Zach Dawson. That was 2009. He played a great game that day as well. But then poor Rob Eddy, he told his parents and his family he was playing. Oh, They're in the no. grandstands. They're waiting for their boy to run out. And went, oh, hang on a minute. He's sitting in the tracksuit. Oh, where's Rob? And he was in the no. tracksuit. So there's always these little stories that happen. But you've got one yourself that happened in the 2009 grand oh, final. Nine, yeah, yeah, nine. It was, yeah. So Thursday session down at, down at Moorabbin. And never seen anything like it. So the, the crowd... Packed. A packed house. Packed house at Moorabbin. the story when we did two warm-up laps because we loved two it. Two more. So, <laughs> so we finished the first warm-up lap and I said, righto, another lap, boys. Let's do <laughs> One more lap. So anyway, so I was not a big sort of trainer during the week, just managing sort of my knee and some some other issues. I would usually do strides or, you know. So, of course, you, you're running strides along the boundary line. Well, it's like you're in the 400 final at mm. the Olympics. The, <laughs> the crowd sort of rise with you as you're, you're running around and seriously got a little, a little bit carried away to the point where I actually – had a bit of a nick in my, my hip flexor. So a little strain in my hip flexor. So it, it was, it was quite inhibiting. I couldn't really take off, had no power, no acceleration and panic yeah. sets oh, in absolutely panicking. I'm thinking, what, what have I done? This is, are you serious? Yeah. Like, I've waited my whole life for this moment. So mm. we went to Box Hill hospital cause we had to go somewhere off Broadway mm. to try and uh, see if we could inject the spot and numb oh. the pain to allow me to be able to take off and play, which we did, but in terms of preparation, you know, 10 p.m. on a Thursday night before the granny doing strides up and down the corridor at Box Hill Hospital. Wow. Not, a, not, a, not ideal preparation. So you went out to Box Hill to think Box you would Hill. get recognised. Well, because if you go to Olympic Park yeah, or you yeah. go to Vimy, Vimy Jay-Z, Hall, Jay-Z and all yeah. his crew would have been Jay-Z working. Jay-Z and Tom Brown. You know, <laughs> all the dirty media people are, are, are sitting, are sitting out there. And now you're which one? <laughs> exactly. I've turned to the dark side, Em. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like they're, they're the things that you look back on and, and they add layers, I guess, to, to the story. Yeah. But and I don't be, think that got out, did it? Like imagine. Out. No, Imagine didn't get that out of the as time. a story on the Friday or the day of the grand mm. final. Yep. Nick Rewald, yep. superstar captain, late in his fitness, fitness test. That would have been a huge out. Well, that's why we, we went to Box Hill, <laughs> <Yeah>. off Broadway. <laughs> yeah. And how, how sore were you? Yeah, um, the back, by, by the time we got to the grand final, the back had settled down a lot. Um, I fractured the transverse process, two transverse process in my lower back. So they're the, the wings on your spine. And I, I unfortunately snapped two of them. Um, in the last game of the year. And as the, the games, uh, we got deeper into the finals, the back felt better and better. So it was still, I had to have some effective pain management mm. uh, to get through the game and landed on my back quite heavily early in the game. But honestly, it was the best it felt. There was still a, a bit of pain there and in some movements, but when the adrenaline's pumping and, and it's a grand final, you don't feel these things. And we had a lot of guys that carried injuries 
throughout that final series and without that buy before the finals, probably would not have got up to play. Yeah, any heroic stories from your good self? Well, uh, mine's probably not as heroic as that, but... Um, Play it up anyway. Well, okay, I'll give it heaps. Yeah, it's probably one of the most heroic things you're ever likely to hear from a man of my stature. Only slight, um, just fearless in the way I approached the ball in those grand finals. But I have to take you back to round 16 or 17, I think it was. In 2010, we played, it was the Pies v. the Saints at the MCG. And uh, I got hit by Lenny Hayes. I think it was about near the second quarter. Not the point. Ball came in, Brendan Goddard kicked it, and it was going to be Lenny and I, and I was always going to get there first. So I was hoping for a good bounce, and so I could try and get through a Lenny Hayes tackle, which mm. is you know, hard. fraught with hard danger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the best of times. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, the ball just sat up on its end a little bit, and I had to do the one where you, you know the contact's coming, and you got the decision. Do you slap it? And mm. You know, look a bit weak. And I remember in my second ever game at Etihad Stadium, I did that. And I got one of the all-time great Michael Malthouse bakes. So yeah. it's amazing what goes through your head in those little split seconds. Yep. That sort of went, no, grab it. Yep. So I grab it. Lenny comes at me. And he doesn't tackle me. He just puts a, like, rugby league sort of style hit on me. Yeah, he, yeah. And he, put it then. <laughs> and so his shoulder just straight in the bottom of my rib cage. Cannoned. Absolutely <laughs> folded me up like a pocket knife. <laughs> I was down. I was out. I think we actually had the audio from yes, way back do. when. <laughs> yeah, good spot. Yeah, so he absolutely mixed me. There's no two ways about it. Well done, Lenny Hayes. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, was that Spud calling that? He's yeah. Obviously yeah. not too sympathetic for poor old Dave yeah. Hughes. Curled up on the ground there. So went to the bench, came off, and was you know, under in a bit of pain, but played on. Went and got a scan, and he actually cracked one of my ribs. Wow. Did Lenny. Oh. So for the rest of the year, um, I think that was around 16 or 17. 17. Had to then continue to play out and getting an ultrasound after the second warm-up, uh, the first warm-up, before the second warm-up, and get a, the rib coated with some uh, a needle and some... Um, Anesthetic? Yeah, some pain relief. So yep. Cortisone? It, um, it was a gross feeling having... Because they literally rub the needle across your rib oh. and then slowly inject it to try and numb it because it's a bone, so you can't really do a lot with it. But uh, that was my grand final uh, stories. Yeah, extraordinary. Mm. I still had 27 touches in that game. Oh, it too. didn't slow me down. There's no, no worry about that. <laughs> so you're... And... Tell us about 2011 because you know, we're talking about great grand final stories and, and big moments. Now, you dislocated your knee, I think, in the prelim the week before against West Coast. Did you yeah, think that's... you were actually going to play the following week? Yeah, well, at the time, Jay, it was, um, you know, it was one of those things that in the prelim final when I twisted the knee, I was in excruciating pain. So my immediate thought was um, I've done something pretty serious and uh, the chance of playing the following week would be pretty slim. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got back into the rooms and then, um, you know, I probably thought that I'd uh, done some serious uh, structural damage. But um, on the Monday, I went and had a scan and uh, they said, well, there's nothing actually structurally wrong. You've, you've uh, dislocated your kneecap and done a little bit of damage. But um, if you can keep the swelling down in your knee, um, you may be a 10% you know, chance of still getting out there. So um, it was a really important week. And I went to extraordinary lengths to, to try and get myself right to play. Uh, I was pretty, pretty lucky to get up for it. It looks pretty boring, the hyperbaric chamber, I'll be honest. How did you amuse yourself <laughs> in there? Did you go for a walk around the block on the, the night before the game or something and then basically concede that you wouldn't get up? Yeah, I think um, yeah, I spent uh, every day in the hyperbaric chamber uh, up in Melbourne where there was a lot of um, probably more so 70-plus-year-olds sitting in there with uh, some sort of skin condition. So it was, it was quite boring in there. <laughs> Um, through the week, there uh, wasn't a lot of chatter going on, but um, <laughs> yeah, that was what I had to do to try and help um, prevent the swelling. Um, and then I think it was probably on the Thursday night, I went for a, a walk around the block. Um, you know, I, I was probably thinking I'm, I'm you know, at the, at the very best, I'm probably a 25, 30% chance of playing. Um, I was extremely sore and I knew that the, um, the doctors would be able to inject the knee to to take away the pain, but um, that was the, the night before uh, my fitness test. So I walked in there on the Friday morning to get my, uh, to do the fitness test and I could barely walk up the, the hallway and I'm not actually, you know, putting any mayonnaise on this. It was pretty, uh, I was limping up the hallway. And, and it's not I a great science, Stevie. 
no, no, I thought it's going to be t- tough to get up here and um, even convince the coaches that I'll be fit to play. But um, I went into the doctor's room and uh, he was able to, in- you know, he put, uh, I think, four injections in to- to- for the fitness test. And uh, within a- about a minute of, um, you know, me limping down the corridor and going into the doctor's office and him putting those jabs in, uh, it just completely took the pain away. I was jumping up and down in, in, in the doctor's office and then I ran up the hallway and I thought, <laughs> I'm, I'm, on. A, I'm a chance tomorrow. So, um, <laughs> I got through the fitness test and um, there was actually, you know, there was helicopters hovering over the oval and I had Taylor Hunt, who was one of the emergencies for the game, uh, who was the uh, the bloke that had to sort of challenge me. And I, I, I got along pretty well, well with Taylor, I said, mate, you're not the first emergency. So if you're doing anything silly, you're not going to play anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, just take it easy on me. He's a good golfing buddy of mine. So he made me look a, a little bit better <laughs> than what I was. But um, yeah, I got through that. But then I was it's still probably the next morning where it blew up again because I put it, put the knee through a fair bit in the fitness test that the next day I was actually sore again. So wow. um, I guess on the way to the game, again, I was still not 100% sure if I'd play until after I uh, went into the medical room about 40 minutes before the game. This is Stevie Johnson reliving his 2011 amazing story to come off a, a serious knee injury to play in the grand final. So just on that then, Stevie, did you have some moments where you thought, geez, am I going to let my team down? Like, I no doubt you wanted to play and you were going to do everything and you were keen, but was there a part of you going, oh, geez, if I go out here and I can't do anything, how bad am I going to feel if mm. I let my teammates down? Yeah, definitely, Joey. I, I, I had that running through my head all week um, because it was the, the 2009 grand final where you know, Geelong played St Kilda and you played in that game yourself. Uh, I had surgery um, in the couple of weeks leading into to that game. And I got up for the prelim uh, for my first game back and then I played in the grand final. I was nowhere near my best and I could I, I really couldn't do what I wanted to do physically, let alone have having Stephen Baker tagging me and, and <laughs> grinding his bloody studs down my car all day him. and punching the back of my elbows. But um, I felt like, we were good enough to get over the line because I was in such a great team, but I didn't have the influence I wanted to in that grand final. I was really conscious of not making a selfish decision in 2011. Mm. So I was confident after doing the fitness test, if the doctors could do what they'd done again on grand final day, um, I'd be able to go out there and still have a pretty good impact on the game. And let's be honest, uh, Stevie, not that it really bothered you too much because you came out in the big dance and you kicked how many? Uh, I think I might have got four that day, Jack. Oh, four uh, goals and 14 possessions. It was another show from one of the great entertainers. To- 